Ed Carr is the former president of the AIC and he's the chairman of Republican Overseas in Switzerland. He joins us today to discuss the latest development on FATCA. Edward, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Nicolette. Thank you for having me back. FATCA is making life difficult for Americans abroad. Can you summarize how it's making it difficult? Sure. Yeah, FATCA is making life difficult for the 7.6 million American citizens that live overseas. Um, specifically, the law requires a lot more reporting requirements, uh, so we have additional expenses, uh, there's more forms, there's a lot of uncertainty still on FATCA. Even though the law is scheduled to go into force the 1st of July, which is only about six weeks away, there's still a lot of global uncertainty. So the law is really, really making our lives miserable for all overseas Americans. And I understand that the number of Americans who are expatriating or renouncing their citizenship is quite high. It's at all time highs, yeah, and especially we see it a lot here in Switzerland. You know, it, it breaks my heart as a U.S. citizen, as a person that loves our country. I know a lot of these people personally, and they feel they have no choice. They feel that the United States government has pushed them into this box. They can't go left. They can't go right. The only solution they have for these long term people that are living in Switzerland or the rest of the world is to ultimately uh, renounce their, their U.S. citizenship and give it up. And that ultimately would get them out of the FATCA reporting requirements and FBARs and everything else. But not only the Republicans are sensitive to this question, the Democrats are also coming up with something, aren't they? That's a really good point, Nicolette. You know, this is an issue that affects all overseas Americans. And it doesn't really matter whether you're Republican, you're Democratic, you're independent. There are a lot of organizations that have been out there really trying to fight for the rights of overseas Americans. I mean, again, there's 7.6 million Americans that live outside the country. This is a law that was designed to try and uh, get some fat cat tax cheats domestically in the United States. And unfortunately, all of the overseas Americans have been caught up in this horrible piece of legislation. Now, the great news is that super lawyer Jim Bob is going to challenge this law. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us on which grounds? Absolutely. So, little history. I mean, Jim Bopp is probably one of the top constitutional lawyers in the United States. And uh, he, it's very exciting, he has come out recently and announced a constitutional challenge to FATCA. So what does that mean? Actually, back in the winter, the Republican National Committee put forward a resolution sponsored by Republican overseas to abolish FATCA. But Jim Bopp has determined, he's done a, a legal analysis and a legal study, that the law can actually be overturned in the courts. And he's looking at three constitutional challenges for FATCA. Number one, specifically, the IGA's intergovernmental agreements that have been, been signed in FATCA are treaties. Treaties need to be ratified by the U.S. Senate. This has not happened. So the second, the second constitutional challenge that Jim Bopp has identified is the Eighth Amendment. Eighth Amendment goes out and talks about cruel and unusual punishment. And U.S. citizens are, we, we don't have to be subjected to cruel and unusual punishment under the U.S. Constitution. Well, actually, some of these excessive fines that come out with FATCA and FBARs could be ruled as cruel and unusual punishment. The third issue is actually a Fourth Amendment issue. And when you look at that, U.S. citizens are entitled to constitutional protection of privacy. And there's major privacy issues with FATCA. Just turning over the data um, could be a major constitutional challenge of this law. And what are the chances of uh, Jim Bopp winning this case? I think the chances are, are very, very, very high and very favorable. You know, Jim Bopp, there was a recent article in the Washington Times that talked about Jim Bopp being a super lawyer. I mean, he is. He's special counsel to the Republican National Committee, special counsel for Republican overseas, and he has analyzed this. Jim Bopp is no stranger to the Supreme Court of the United States of America. In fact, he has won nine out of 13 cases that he's had before the Supreme Court. You know, Nicolette, if, if you follow Major League Baseball in the United States, if you ever had any Major League hitters that have that kind of track record, nine out of 13, I mean, they are absolute superstars. Jim Bopp is one of the top constitutional superstars in the United States. Now, he's also the gentleman who single-handedly went out and took down McCain-Feingold. McCain-Feingold was campaign finance reform law. Very important to remember, 
That law had been on the books for eight years before Jim Bopp launched his constitutional challenge. He analyzed the law and he determined there was one constitutional issue that he could use to overturn McCain-Feingold. He argued the case successfully all the way up to the Supreme Court and had the law overturned. So we are really, really excited about FATCA because again, there's three issues with FATCA and he overturned McCain-Feingold on just one constitutional challenge. But how long is this going to take? Um, what is going to happen? In the meantime, will the law be suspended, as it has been for the Dodd-Frank Act, some of the Dodd-Frank Act provisions? And ultimately, what happened with the agreements with other countries, Switzerland in particular? Well, it's certainly going to take some time. I mean, challenges uh, work their way through the courts. It can go from a circuit court to a federal court upon appeals all the way to the Supreme Court. So this takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. Second point, very important. Laws usually have a constitutional challenge after they go into effect because that's when the damages can be properly assessed. FACA goes into effect July 1st, 2014, and six weeks from now. So Jim Bopp will be there and he will launch his constitutional challenge. We are very, very confident that he will prevail. How long could it take? I think a couple of years is a pretty reasonable time frame to think about this challenge. What are the implications when this law get overturned? Well, number one, when you look at it, uh, a lot of the banks and a lot of the financial institutions, let's take Switzerland, our backyard that we know, they are spending tens of millions of Swiss francs and dollars to be compliant with FATCA, to provide all this information, to have new IT systems, to have this piece of legislation literally forced down their throats. They have to spend a lot of money. So you're going to have a big cost savings right away. Number two, there'll definitely be some, some differences depending if a country has signed a Model 1 agreement or a Model 2 agreement towards reciprocity. And I think in the future, countries will have to determine on their own voluntary basis if they would want to comply with something like this. Ed, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Nicolette.